Hi, everyone. It's Roland Kim here with the Kim Boone and Real Estate Team, Top 1% Team in Metro Vancouver, licensed with Keller Williams Van Central. Today, I want to give you an update for May 2024. And it's uh, today's May 17th. Some of these numbers are from May 15th. Keep in mind that all the market activity, all market situation is specific to what your current situation is. So please reach out to me. I'd love to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation and see how these following uh, facts affect you. When we jump right into it, we get to see the market trend of activities of sales for last month. So let's start at the bottom here. So May 15th, the middle of this month, there was in the Greater Vancouver Real Estate Board, we had 1,336 300, transactions, my apologies. When I average that out per day, when I multiply it by the 31 days in May, I get to see that we are estimating May is going to complete with around 2,761 transactions. That actually represents a nearly 20% decrease from the previous May one year earlier. So that's probably in line maybe with what you've heard recently that the active listings are up and sales are a little bit sluggish at the moment. So certainly that is what we're seeing mid-month in May. And that is something that's province-wide. This is the median new listing count. Uh, active listings in the entire uh, province passed 20,000 in April. And so that is the highest level they've been since summer of COVID four years ago. So there's a lot more listings in the marketplace. So when we look across the province at all the different real estate boards, these numbers are from, uh, from April. But what we're starting to see is that year over year, unit sales for the month of April were starting to trend down year over year in a few markets. And Halfway through May, I can tell you that one month from now, this is gonna look negative in most, uh, most of these different real estate markets, these different real estate boards. So it is a shift right now. I believe it's a shift that will be maintained until we see a interest rate reduction, which may happen in June or may happen later this year, but certainly less sales and more active listings is the story of today. And that is not just a local real estate situation or a provincial, it's a federal. So the total number of properties federally on the market rose 6.5% in the month of April is what I just read here. And that's the second fastest monthly gain ever in active listings um, from the Canadian Real Estate Association. <clears throat> Unemployment has ticked up a little bit. It's uh, certainly a trend that's showing uh, more unemployment on the horizon, not in the sense that it is affecting the real estate market locally, but we are in a market, I think, where employers are a lot more uh, reserved in replacing positions that they may have vacated as there is uncertainty in the market ahead. Our inflation rate is um, kind of holding steady. We will have next week on, on uh, May 21st, the announcement for May. Um, hopefully it doesn't break through 3% and hopefully it continues to go down. Last month was at 2.9%. And what we see here, that is a continuing challenge that obviously the, the, the federal government is aware of before they are going to perhaps lower interest rates. It's entirely tied to what's going to happen with the inflation results coming out next week in May. To that end, interest rates held at the last meeting and the next meeting is June 5th. I'd say from most people I speak to, the consensus is 50-50. If interest, uh, rather, if the inflation goes down below 2.5 next week, then it's certainly we're going to see an inf uh, interest rate cut. But if it pops over uh, 3%, uh, all bets are off. Uh, inflation is definitely one of the big factors that we got to consider. Uh, as you remember from last month, there's three recent positive changes from the Canadian government. So recently they made a change allowing 30-year amortization periods on mortgages that are insured. Again, those are mortgages that have 20% or less down payment. And um, for first-time buyers, they can have a 30-year amortization period. Uh, starting April 16th, which has happened, first-time home buyers can now draw up to $60,000 from their RSP. And that is up from the previous uh, total max, which was 35000 For folks who have already pulled money out of their RSP, there is also a change that is allowing the payback payment uh, to extend up to five years rather than the previous two years. Also taking effect on June 25th um, next month is that the capital gains tax is going to change. If you're an individual, the annual capital gains tax 
on anything exceeding 250,000, the portion of gains including the taxable income will rise from 50% to 66.6%. And for corporate trusts, all capital gains will now be taxed at that inclusion rate of two thirds up from one half. Again, go talk to an accountant, go talk to a lawyer, how it specifically affects you. But in short, uh, capital gains is uh, is more expensive, the tax on capital gains. Net migration, immigration to Canada continues to be at an elevated level. It's quite impressive when you look over the 20-year horizon, what a million net immigration to Canada looks like, and that is having an impact. So keep in mind that uh, Canada does not build houses quickly. In fact, our one of our highest housing starts was in the 70s. And since then, we've been averaging around 250 to 270,000 new units being created each year. That is substantially off what uh, even recently the federal government purported that they're um, trying to achieve that by you know 2030, they're going to add another 4 million new housing units to the market. But certainly nothing that we're seeing is indicating that uh, that shift is taking place. But we'll see. Maybe they have some ex some expert ways of doing it that I haven't noticed yet. As well, uh, for every housing unit currently being created, when you use simple immigration versus supply math, there's five people coming to Canada right now for every one unit. Um, that is that is a number that is forever going to be in, uh, impacting uh, the simple lack of 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 units versus this versus the demand that's really there. Uh, on that note, too, what we are building is shifting. We're building, again, more and more rental units. That is where the government is focusing their attention. And uh, currently, 41.7% of all units being created in BC are rental purposed. I expect within the next five years, that'll be over 50%. We'll have more units uh, that are being built, being purpose built for rental. There's a number of reasons for that. But what that means, again, it's going to add more pressure on any of those items, any of those homes that are available in the resale market or are brand new in the real resale market. Positive news on this shift is I do believe that in the future, the percentage of, of uh, take home pay that a tenant is paying for rent will proportionally go down as more rental units come onto the market. But for resale uh, homes, I think the the price will continue to go up over the long run because there's uh, again a scarcity and we're not building at the pace we need to. So this is interesting home ownership rate. So it shows you two uh, census information. So 2011 um, shows you in the yellow the home ownership rate in Canada. In 2021, it shows you that most areas had a reduced. A home ownership rate. I am going to look back at this slide in 2031, which is years from now, and I think it's going to be one of the most dramatic shifts where uh, home ownership will drop in some areas below 50%. I do believe it's going to be that extreme that uh, more the majority of people within the next 10 years will be renters. That's That's clearly what I'm seeing happening right now. So in summary, the market is stable in the Metro Vancouver area, but it is trending slower and it's certainly slower in sales and transactional sales year over year. So what's that mean? If you're a buyer, there's more opportunity. Uh, if you're a seller, make sure you're priced right and make sure you're you know, calculating all the different variables. We're likely heading into a long-term semi-stagnant marketplace. The prices will remain higher. Um, unemployment is likely to, to increase a bit and um, housing availability and the high immigration are the biggest drivers that are the underpinnings of supporting real estate pricing and the interest rates are the hardest thing for buyers to get past, which is pushing down on sales volume and certainly pushing down on price growth in certain areas. So in summary, until uh, interest rates go down, I don't see the market really warming up and equally because there's such a shortage of available housing, uh, for the market that and there's a steady immigration into Canada as well as so many other factors I don't see prices really going down so stable thanks everyone so for all your real estate needs give us a call if we can help and I'm always just a click or a phone call away and hope there was some value here for you